Dear Agne, dear Natalia, dear colleagues, for me it's a great honor to be here, to have the opportunity to share our Ukrainian experience with you. And as I understand that the only thing which divides us from the lunch is my presentation show, so I will do my best to be shorter, uh, to be short. So, uh, first of all, I want uh, to share some basic knowledge about mediation in Ukraine and its development. As you can see, uh, the law on mediation was adopted only on the uh, 16th, 16th of, uh, of uh, 2021, 16th, or, uh, 16th of November, sorry, 2021. So it was just before the war, and last week we celebrated the second anniversary of our uh, law on mediation. Uh, but uh, we definitely can say that even without law, mediation existed for a long time and first pilot schemes were adopted in 1997 even. So uh, the law enshrined the classic facilitative mediation and on the screen you can see the notion of mediation uh, according to law on mediation. So, in, medi in Ukraine, mediator is a specially prepared, neutral, independent, impartial person who conducts the mediation and finishes the basic mediation course in Ukraine or abroad. At least 90 hours, including no less than 45 hours of practical skills training. At the same time, public authorities, different institutions, for example, courts uh, and other persons may impose additional requirements on the uh, to the mediators they engage. Notaries also can conduct a mediation if they finished the basic mediation course. So, uh, on the screen you can see the scope of the law uh, of Ukraine on mediation. It's uh, quite broad. It contains, uh, it covers uh, civil, commercial, even criminal matters, etc. Classical principles of voluntariness, confidentiality, neutrality, independence, and impartiality of the mediator, self-determination uh, of the parties, and equality of the rights of the parties on mediation are enshrined in the law. As we can see, uh, law of mediation uh, is, uh, has uh, a, framework, a framework character. At the same time, uh, it is good because it helps to develop a free market of mediation practice and training to become a mediator as well as the, the functioning of different self-regulatory organizations of mediators. For example, the, Nas uh, the National Association of Mediators of Ukraine, Association of Family Mediators of Ukraine, Odessa Mediation Group, Center of Law and Mediation, etc. But on the other hand, in some cases, such framework regulation is not enough for some specific areas uh, which I wanted uh, to point out in my presentation. First of all, it's uh, challenges connected to a court connected mediation. One of the most important issues today from the access to justice perspective is the development of an effective scheme of court connected mediation. In spite of the fact that uh, there are some uh, provisions referring to mediation in procedural courts, for example, the obligation of the court to ask parties of the proceedings whether they wanted to use the mediation, mediators in unity, the rule about decreasing the court fees in case of settlement, etc., there is still no effective scheme for ref uh, referring uh, the cases from the judge to mediation. As I said previously, the law on mediation has a framework character, that is why it says nothing about court connection mediation. Also, there is no unified register of mediators and no association membership in which is obligatory in Ukraine. A lot of, uh, a lot of such association function uh, like uh, NGOs and practice mostly in the private sector. It also influences the development of court-connected mediation in Ukraine and only uh, mediation schemes uh, as a part of legal aid exist for some kinds of criminal matters and in pro bono basis for civil matters. Another point is the existence of a special procedure, a dispute settlement with the participation of the judge in uh, procedural courts. 
It is the judge cancellation procedure enshrined in procedural court, uh, and it is conducted by the judge who hear, uh, hears uh, the case if parties want to use this procedure. So every judge in Ukraine potentially can be a judge conciliator. But the problem is that there is no special education except two-day training for judges on this issue. In my opinion, it is not enough to be uh, uh, to, to functioning um, as an effective conciliator for such uh, judges. At the same time, in spite of the fact that there are judges who finished mediation training, there is no special notion about the right of a judge to be a mediator in Ukraine. So now one of the main highly debated issues in this area is the development of the, an effective court connected or judicial uh, mediation or both these types. Another challenge is the, a mandatory mediation uh, about which we are speaking a lot. Uh, uh, now, according to the law on mediation, we have only a voluntary model of mediation. But we know that some kinds of mandatoriness of mediation can be seen in different European Union, Union countries. Such tendencies uh, led the Ukrainian legislator to um, uh, make in 2016 some amendments even to the Constitution of Ukraine. Uh, previously, Article 124 of the Constitution said that the jurisdiction of the court covers all legal relationships in the country. It means that access to court is free, uh, was uh, free for everyone and there can uh, be no limitation on such access, especially in the context of some special pretrial procedure. Now, uh, this uh, provision of constitution uh, looks like in another way. So, on the slide you can see it. So, the jurisdiction of the courts extends to any legal dispute and any criminal charge, like it was enshrined in European Convention on Human Rights. In cases provided by law, courts also considered other cases. The law may provide for a mandatory pretrial dispute resolution procedure. Till this time, this provision of the Constitution have no uh, practical realization, and it is more about our attitudes to the ADR area, mediation and pre-trial dispute resolution, uh, dispute procedures in terms of access to justice. Uh, the set of problems connected with the realization of this provision uh, is huge. First of all, we are thinking about guarantees of the right to a fair trial in terms of Article 6 of the European Convention on Human Rights, because introduction of mandatory mediation, even in some category of cases, as a pre-trial dispute resolution procedure, presupposes access to mediation, including free of charge mediation for those who have uh, the right to legal aid. Ukraine is a huge country, and in the current situation, the biggest problem for introducing some kind of mandatoriness uh, in mediation uh, connected with resources, financial resources, as well as human resources, I mean a number of mediation who can cover all the country. Uh, the uh, third observation connected with martial law, because war is also a great challenge. Now we can see uh, increase, increasing number of conflicts in Ukraine society. There are different kinds of conflicts. For example, on the one hand, we can see an increasing number of family conflicts, for example, divorces conflicts, conflicts connected with the movement of children abroad, uh, as well as day-to-day uh, -day family conflicts between family members. On the other hand, we can see huge conflicts that involve big groups of people. For example, conflicts inside the community, so-called gromada, connected with the distribution of municipal fundings, for example, between the army and culture, army, army and building the new roads, etc. All these conflicts have their specific and there is a need for special education for mediators and other practitioners on these issues. I mean facilitators of dialogue, for example. Uh, and also online mediation should be mentioned in this regard. At first, COVID pandemic and then the war increased the number of online mediations and improved the skills of mediations in this kind of, uh, in this area, because online Zooms became became a new normal in our situation. 
uh, and a lot of mediators and parties are allocated in different places in Ukraine, Europe, and all over the world. This is why uh, online mediation is very popular now in Ukraine. Another point is uh, the integration to the European Union. Uh, Ukraine wished to become a member of the European Union family, which is, uh, presuppose a work on adaptation of national legislation to the European Union law. I had the big honor to be in a part of the team that evaluated the Ukrainian legislation on civil justice and ADR every year uh, in terms of European uh, Union law. And in this regard, I can say that the law on mediation is in conformity with the European Union directive on uh, civil and commercial matters, but at the same time we can face some problems with the implementation and fulfillment of the specific obligations in the ADR area. For example, Article 25, Alternative Dispute Resolution of the Council Regulation, on jurisdiction, uh, the recognition and enforcement of decisions and uh, matrimonial matters and the matters of parental responsibility and on international child abduction request, presuppose that as early as possible and at any stage of the proceedings, the court either directly or where appropriate with the assistance of the central authorities uh, shall invite the parties to consider whether they are willing to engage in mediation or other means of alternative dispute resolution unless there is contrary to the best interests of the child. It is not appropriate in the particular case or would unduly delay the proceedings. But without effective communication between court, this uh, central authority connected with the implementation of um, this area of law and mediator, this provision could hardly be brought into life. Uh, last but not least, uh, ratification on the, of the Singapore Convention. So, uh, Ukraine signed a Singapore Convention in 2019, but it was not ratified yet, uh, in spite of the fact that the draft law on ratification of this convention uh, was, uh, was made by the group of uh, scientists and Ministry of Justice in 2019 while signing this convention. And uh, this is a huge discussion, uh, we can see a huge discussion on this area in Ukraine because European Union did not sign this uh, document. And uh, this is the question about reservation, whether we need to make this reservation and whether we need to ratify this convention as soon as possible. Uh, and what actually um, amendments to the civil procedural law we should do uh, as we can see it, for example, for arbitration in terms of New York Convention. So, as we can see, there is a lot of challenges and there is a lot of uh, work to do with uh, for Ukraine, uh, but uh, on this point I will stop and invite everybody to lunch. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. Achoo.